Hey everybody, Stephanie McPhail Sharon here, Dream Coach. Just wanted to talk to you guys about um, the interesting thing about family genetics. Um, there's a lot of things that we seem to blame on family genetics. It could be something to do with our personality, it could be something to do with our health, it could be even, you know, mannerisms that we have or, or whatever it is. So, quick story. Um, earlier last week, I went in to get my blood work results. And when I got my blood work results, I right away go look at the cholesterol levels and I look at the triglycerides. And it's become kind of like a, a fun thing that I do uh, since I was like 19 years old. Um, and I get my results back and, you know, not really that surprisingly, my total cholesterol is 155 and my triglycerides are only 89. Now for anyone who doesn't, who is not sure about uh, cholesterol levels and um, triglyceride levels, that's really good numbers. So, you know, that's really, really awesome. And every single time I get my numbers back, I reflect back to 20 years ago now when I was 19 and I went to the doctor for blood work and they called me back and they said, you know, we're concerned because your cholesterol is elevated, your triglycerides are high, um, we're probably going to have to put you on cholesterol lowering medications, if not now, then in the very near future. And I said, why? And they said, well, because you have a family history of high cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. So it just runs in your family. You know, there's not much you can really do about it. And I said, but I eat egg and cheese sandwiches every single day on my way to work. Um, I have a feeling that's probably not helping much my cholesterol levels. And they're like, well, you know, it probably isn't. There's not really much you can do. You're, you're stuck with what you got. And I said, okay, well, if that's the case, I'm going to ask you to redo my levels of cholesterol in about six to eight weeks. Could you do that? And they said, yeah, yeah, sure, we can do that, but we're not really going to find much of a difference. So I said, okay. Now, I was already someone who was working out five or six times a day. I was in great shape, very muscular, um, you know, taking really good care of myself. But I was 19 years old, and having an egg and cheese bagel would be like my big meal, and then I wouldn't eat anything again for hours and hours, like not till probably seven o'clock at night because I was going to college full time. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to have egg and cheese bagels anymore on my way to school. I'm going to try to change it up. So I changed it up. I started doing like oatmeal and, and whatever else that was, you know, I could, I could do in the morning. Um, and I go back eight weeks later and my cholesterol is not elevated anymore. It still wasn't 155. That, that probably took a little while for me to get to that level, but it was within normal range. It was under 200. Everything was great. No, no signs of anything wrong. And they said, oh, wow, that was, that was good. And I said, yeah, I stopped eating egg and cheese bagels every single day. And they were kind of shocked. They're like, well, we're still going to have to watch you because it is a family history. All right. Well, so, you know, I was already a vegetarian then. Um, and I think that that really throw, threw off a lot of doctors to say, you know, oh, she shouldn't have high cholesterol. She's a vegetarian. Well, I was eating a lot of cheese. Um, and that was probably the biggest thing, eggs and cheese and, and, and breads and things like that. So, you know, I started changing what I was eating and I started really in the, in the past probably 10 years or so, I started doing a lot of green smoothies. Um, and green smoothies are um, great for all the vitamins and minerals in the, um, the greens, you know, three quarters greens, a quarters of fruit, handful of flaxseed, um, almond milk and water. Um, and, you know, I've been doing that for a long time. So that seems to really have helped really bring down all of my numbers. Um, so I still cheat. I'm still not perfect um, where, you know, on the weekends. And, and I know that actually it's something I need to change because it's kind of a bad habit that I've gotten into after I, I was pregnant. Um, but I, I do cheat on the weekends and my cholesterol is still amazingly wonderful. So I say all of that for a very important reason. You know, I know that my family history um, of high blood pressure and heart disease and things like that for a lot of people would just be a death sentence They would just okay. I just have to take medication for the rest of my life. This is this is just what it is You know everybody in my family gets cancer everybody in my family gets heart disease. It's just what it is Well when you're not ready to you know reserve yourself to that kind of fate things really change you don't have to follow the same traditions that your family did. And sometimes that's a little uncomfortable. I know even when I go visit my family now and they make a special meal or they do certain things and I, I don't really eat and, and you know do those things anymore, it's a little bit uncomfortable to be the one saying, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna eat that or I'm going to uh, bring my own food or, or something like that. And people can get really you know, 
unsure of themselves because they don't want to make anybody feel bad and they don't want to go against what the traditions are. But if you look at your family and you're looking at the things that are going wrong for them health-wise, do you want to continue in their footsteps? So that can go with anything in life. It can be, you know, some of the best thing, lessons that I've had have been from my family members of, you know, bad relationships that they were in that I was learning as a child. And now things that I said, okay, you know what? I decide that that's changing with me now. So it can be relationships. It can be the food. It can be how you react, your anger. It could be how you talk to people. Um, it could be so many different things. But it is your responsibility to figure that out and then make your decisions for yourself. Just because other people in your family did it doesn't give you an excuse to continue that. And if you do, you can't be surprised when those bad things that happen to other people that you, um, that you love happen to you as well. So take your lessons however you can, learn from them, grow from them, and continue making the best version of yourself. Thank you.